today I just want to be talking about, again, just utilizing this MATLAB CAPE open unit operation to be able to make these real hydrocarbon mixture uh, separation predictions. So to start this talk, I just want to give a, just a brief outline of our contribution, just what you'll be thinking about. Over the course of this talk is that, again, we're just going to be presenting our experience using uh, Mster Kim's MATLAB unit operation. And specifically, we implemented our novel numerical method for hydrocarbon mixture permeation across asymmetric membrane layers. And with this implementation, we can actually uh, exploit the powerful thermodynamic packages found within many commercial process simulators, as well as the physical property databases to actually precisely predict this local membrane transport. And what I mean by local membrane transport, first we can visualize just a uh, basic flat plate membrane module, just the full module, the global module. And if we look at the feed and permeate chambers, we can actually zoom in on this uh, active and support layer since it is an asymmetric membrane. And what we're looking at is the local point transport through this membrane. So given the system conditions, the feed uh, phase one parameters, the absorption and diffusion parameters, what we're trying to look at is what is the separation on the other side in the permeate as well as the rate per area or the flux of the membrane. And we want to look at this local membrane transport just because that is the foundational model for the global module. So if we don't get the local transport right, we're not going to get the global transport right. And also it's good for validation of small scale experimental measurements. So looking at some motivation and applications of industrial membrane processes, I just wanted to show this nice figure. Uh, this shows the total energy consumption for the US at least. And you can see that half of the industrial energy is actually spent upon uh, just separating the uh, fine chemicals, et cetera, that we make. And another half of that is uh, based upon a very uh, thermally energy intensive uh, distillation columns. And we can see that membranes would save about 90%. So we can cut almost 7.5 percent of the uh, country's U.S. like energy consumption and then if we scale that to the world we can also help there. So looking at some uh, quick applications for complex hydrocarbon mixtures we can see here from crude oil refinery, bio oil refinery, benzene derivative concentration and also alkenes from alkanes. We can focus in on crude oil refinery and I'm sure everyone's aware of just the sheer number of components that are within these uh, crude oil mixtures, we can see that they go into a lot of different plastics and refined chemicals. And within all these process streams, there's going to be many different opportunities to be able to separate complex mixtures. And again, looking, because we are trying to transition the world from a more fossil fuel based to a more green bio oil based, we can look also at different bio based feedstocks and see again how we can produce many different solvents that's again going to create a lot of different complex mixtures that can be utilized with these membrane processes. And again, uh, the benzene derivatives, this is just an exemplar case for iso uh, paraxylene separation. So isomer separations from either benzene derivatives as well as alkenes from alkanes because a lot of these are using cryogenic distillation. Uh, again, very energy intensive processes that we can see a lot of benefit using these membranes. And one of the reasons that we haven't seen these industrial membrane processes necessarily applied is that these unit operations are non-existent in most commercial simulators. Given one of the uh, examples with Kim stations, they do have a very simple gas separation unit, so it's a good step forward. However, it's still for a constant permeability, uncoupled, sort of ideal gas separation. So looking at a solution to this is, uh, again, the standard interoperability of Cape Open uh, that I've found sort of just this general umbrella term of chemical process modeling. I just want to go through just the simple terms again uh, for a process modeling environment, and we have the process modeling component. And in this case, uh, the Cape Open allows a sort of socket and plug to be able to uh, communicate in between these standards uh, between the PME and the PMC. And for our specific use case, we're going to be looking at a proprietary thermodynamic package flow sheet uh, from our experimental collaborator that's implemented in, uh, from Exxon in Aspen Tech. And we're going to be looking at our complex mixture uh, polymeric simulation through MATLAB. And we're going to be utilizing, again, this Amsterdam wrapper to be able to uh, actually communicate with this PME and the PMC and be able to use these uh, processes within this flow sheet. So from our specific use case, we can actually look at our specific application. So from Dr. Lively and another group at Georgia Tech, we had an experimental collaboration and we looked at two different glassy polymer membranes and three different complex mixtures. So this is from a variety of 12 different organic molecules. We can see that uh, for separation one, we looked at a five component through PIM one, 
For separation two, we looked at a nine component separation through SBAD, and I can name these chemicals if you're interested. Uh, and then for separation three, again, it's just another a very complex mixture going through SBAD. So we're looking at these different polymer, glassy polymer membranes. And with this gate open tool, it actually enabled us to assess three different membrane absorption models and five different diffusion scenarios to be able to look at and pick out which one was the best one. And also, I just wanted to highlight that for glassy polymers, we did actually propose in this publication uh, down at the bottom there, a, a new sorption model and also two novel diffusion models, depending upon uh, sort of different characteristics of the system and different uh, ways to think about the transport. So now moving on from our application, why we want to use Cape Open, uh, we can just take a just a brief background moment to look at our actual membrane simulation. So utilizing this software, we actually made a custom PMC for these industrial membrane modules. And just before we get into those details, I want to just set up this local transport problem. So looking at this cartoon uh, from the initial picture, I just wanted to show sort of three figures of the same uh, asymmetric local transport problem. So we can see that uh, with a asymmetric membrane, we're really splitting it up in this active layer and support layer. And what we really care about, since we're really assuming that there's no resistance to transport in the support layer, we're going to be looking at this uh, active layer in phases one, which is going to be the feed, two is the active layer, and then three is going to be the support layer. We can look at this figure down here at the bottom, which is going to be a more quantitative representation and seeing how those driving forces are actually changing as far as uh, just standard notation for chemical engineering, for chemical potential, pressure, composition, fluxes, and we're really, again, just caring about the transport through that active layer. So with the sort of system in mind and the different phases, we can look at the actual sorption diffusion mechanism and see exactly how we are modeling this transport. And it has been accepted in the literature for like almost 50 years now about the sorption diffusion model. And we can think about this as a three-step mechanism to where step A is just going to be a simple thermodynamic equilibrium from the feed phase one and the active layer phase two. So just sort of zooming in on that active layer here for just this picture, this figure to the right. Uh, step B is where we're actually going to be diffusing through phase two. And then step C is going to be the absorption between, again, the thermodynamic equilibrium between phases two and three, which is going to be the active layer and support layer. And then again, I just wanted to show once we have an idea of what these steps are, just sort of the equation system. Now, I don't want you to have to absorb all these uh, equations here. I just want to show sort of this is a rigorous model that is not something that we could just implement trivially. What I really want to highlight is absorption diffusion step B, uh, where we actually utilize the maxwell stefan model. And it ends up being an actual DAE system in the case of implicit isotherms, where we actually also need to take into account these uh, algebraic constraints that come from the thermodynamic model that describes the uh, sort of absorption within the membrane phase. So with the system in mind and the equations, we can look at our actual uh, novel uh, numerical method, in this case, a shooting algorithm within the PMC framework. So again, this is a big figure to be able to digest. So we need to break it down into sort of the top part and the bottom part. And we can also look at how we're utilizing this Cape Open uh, Amsterdam software uh, within each of the pieces. So looking at this first uh, sort of section, you can think about this as all the inputs and initializing the outer solver. So what we need is we need to look up the pure component properties and evaluation for all phases. We need to look at the absorption diffusion to be able to actually find the activity coefficient. So we need to actually evaluate the uh, powerful thermodynamic package within that commercial simulator. And in order to use that, we uh, really use this uh, powerful function that is in within this Amsterdam software it is called get single phase property. And there's over a list of, I think, 50 different properties, but what we really wanted is activity coefficients. We wanted vapor pressures, molar volumes, and we also wanted the uh, pure component fugacities. And this is just a very simple uh, function to implement. However, it enabled us to get a lot of uh, better predictions within our uh, simulations. And then looking at the next part of a membrane simulation, we can see the actual where everything gets solved within the shooting algorithm for this inner and outer solver. Uh, again, uh, I don't want you to get too many details of all the sort of each of the boxes and each of the equations. The main thing that I want to show is just where we are actually using this Cape Open implementation. So again, we need to so uh, solve for the component activity coefficients. And then we need to solve for, again, use, well, actually use those pure component fugacities that we used to be able to evaluate the phase two component activities. And then again, we're just using this function to be able to communicate with the thermodynamic properties uh, package within this commercial process simulator. So looking at using Amsterdam software, we weren't necessarily interested with communicating yet with the other components in the flow sheet. 
we were mainly just interested with looking at the local transport and the future work is going to be actually connecting these feed and tin tape permeate streams and looking at other functions that are utilized within the uh, Cape Open software uh, through Amsterdam. And we're actually going to be looking at an overall global process unit. But right now we're just looking at mainly uh, just the, again, the local transport. So I just want to go through and show just really how easy it was to get it up and running. It was very straightforward. I spent maybe a day just reading through the function references and general syntax. And it was actually a very nice tool to implement because I could just copy and paste my sort of main script to where everything is being either looped over and I could actually just run this directly in here and test it. And this is actually mainly what I use with just the test function. I mean, just because I didn't interface too much with the other uh, components in the flow sheet, that's just going to be for more future work. So we really wanted to just test the software and see how we could uh, predict local transport using these real mixtures. And then what's really nice function also is that I can add each and every one of my additional files as far as databases, uh, the equilibrium evaluations, all those helper functions. I don't think there was any limit to the number of functions I could add. So it was really nice and straightforward to actually implement this software. And then our implementation, I just want to give a few highlights uh, that we did have a custom hydrocarbon mixture permeation simulation. And all of this was based upon pure component membrane sorption and diffusion properties. And we will actually see that based upon just pure component properties and a few correlations, we can actually predict the multi-component complex mixture transport actually very, fairly well. But I just wanted to show the sort of feature of this code is that you can input the components, the membrane and model selection. So here you can either, depending upon what's in your database, you can have one for SBAD, one for your different uh, membrane materials. And then from there, you can actually pick, you can pick and choose. So you could delete all these uh, different components and you can pick exactly what mixture you want. And then obviously you could put the different compositions. You can change those numbers, but what actually has to go into is that there's uh, other things that I'm not showing as far as different sorption models, different diffusion models and cross coupling models. Uh, that really just allows you to hand pick exactly how you want to simulate the system and what custom mixture you'd like. And it's going to just uh, be able to output from those uh, defined functions. We can see the output of the all parameter matrices required just because when I showed that Maxwell Stefan model, each of those matrices are actually dependent and they're going to be in by in. So however many number of components it needs to be built. Uh, yeah, this needs to be built on a just sort of a custom, yeah, exactly, the custom matrix from sort of an overall database. So it's just kind of pulling from those things. And again, we're going to be using this proprietary thermodynamic mixture activity model parameters uh, through ExxonMobil. And then again, we're going to be looking at the property databases. And sort of the big feature of this tool is that we can assess the, per, the permeation predictions across different absorption diffusion models and mixtures for validating what simulates a given application best. So just to give you an idea of the number of simulations that we actually went through, we went through 270 across three different mixtures and 330 across 12 different components, and also a handful of multi-component absorption simulations. So given an idea of just some of the predictions uh, for multi-component absorption, it is actually very difficult to be able to do these measurements, and that's why sort of the experiment does have large error bars, but you can see for our proposed langmuir flory huggins Absorption model, we can see that the predictions are uh, fairly within for each of the binary absorption separations for uh, one of the polymers, in this case, PIM1. And then looking next again at another ternary mixture separation, the multi-component absorption, we can see that we can uh, also predict the absorption as far as uh, the flory huggins lemire is actually giving the best predictions for the uptake and almost for the uh, actual separation itself or the equilibrium conditions. And then the actually uh, really interesting part is when we look at all this data as far as how the prediction for the permeation is predicted, we can see highlighting the langmuir flory huggins and also SC4 and SC5, which include our novel diffusion models, we can actually see that we can get the composition-based error within 8.3%, 8, 8 which is almost on the order of the uh, experimental uh, average error and then for the flux base so we sort of split this up into composition base as well as flux base to see the degree of separation uh, but also the total flux because the total flux has a lot more experimental error because of the variation in the thickness and the composition base is just getting it from a mass spec so the experimental error for that is lower 
Um, so with that, I just want to show the advantages and challenges. So again, for the Amsterdam software, the process to get it up and running, it was very straightforward. It took about a day just to go through and learn the syntax. Uh, in some cases, the iteration guess uh, for phase three molar compositions would be illogical and they would not sum to unity. And a quick workaround after just going on the Cape Open form uh, by uh, Jasper von Botten on Cape Open form to normalize these compositions. And then that is another uh, really good tool as far as the support on the Cape Open forms that I was reading through many of the different uh, forms and other threads about using Python and like before this tool was actually released. Uh, 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 Jasper was talking about before and the only software bug that I really encountered was the global variable would sometimes read zero components when in fact there are 14. So just what I mean is that when I tried to test this I would see that in component equals zero which is the global uh, variable and it would just sort of cause my code not to be able to run uh, and this is what we want just for the single component case to where we want it to spit out the uh, local component flux, the composition and also the partial fluxes. And then again, just a quick workaround, and I didn't post this on the Cape Open form. I'm sure I could have got a lot of uh, helpful sort of things to try. This was just because it didn't really occur too often. So I just had a quick workaround where I just add a new MATLAB unit op to where it just shows this main default screen. And then I could load the model file and also run the flow sheet simulation to reinstallize the Steam components. And that just was a very simple workaround. And then also uh, because of the fact that I have the ability to save this MATLAB unit op model, it's very valuable for using between different Cape Open compliant PMEs. Uh, I'm actually gonna be looking at trying to use this in uh, Kim stations as well as maybe possibly uh, GPROMs because uh, just for the people that I work with, we do have a lot of different uh, commercial process simulators to use. And then conclusions, I just wanted to show that we implemented our complex mixture membrane simulation uh, within this Merschel process simulator, and we couldn't do it without Amsterdam's MATLAB unit operation. And then we also accounted for these non-idealities in the bulk mixture as well as got to utilize these uh, commercial property databases. And future work is that we want to naturally extend this local membrane transport simulation to the global module and actually interface with the overall process flow sheet and use a lot of uh, sort of set product and get feed parameters and be able to be able to have a more natural integration within the process flow sheet. And again, for the global transport, it's just gonna be a, a little tougher problem because now we have driving force changes in the X direction, but also we have these permeant concentration changes in the X direction through this selective layer. And then with that, I would also like to release our Cape Open unit op. And we do have the standalone MATLAB implementation available. Uh, it's been released and it will be available online, I think in the next, at least the next couple of weeks. Uh, however, you can contact us for the zip file uh, download. And with that, I would just like to acknowledge the project partners as well as the academic institutions and the PIs of the people that I work for. And I'm very grateful to be able to have this opportunity to present my work to you. And I also wanted to thank uh, Amster Kim, MATLAB, and Colin for the opportunity to present my work